To me, that's about as selfish as it gets because you're not doing everything you can do in your power because you're a little uncomfortable and you're scared of something you don't even know what you're scared of. Yeah. When it comes down to making calls, what gets a person or takes a person out of the mind of, I'm scared to pick up this heavy phone, to doing it, what keeps a person from being separated from those from that action? Well, man, I think at the end of the day, you you ask that person who says, oh, this phone is too heavy for me. Why is that phone heavy? Like, what 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 are you scared of exactly? The most common answer I get is, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm scared of. Right, because there's really nothing to be scared of. The second most common answer, I guess, rejection. They're scared to get rejected, but I'm. But again, it makes me come back to what's so bad about this. I do understand because when I everybody goes through the same thing. This is something people should know if you're really worried about making calls. Is that every single person that went through this and makes calls at this point? I don't care who you are. That first call session was scary, right? That second call session was scary. I don't care who you are. You could be anybody that a master of the masters of calls and your first call session was scary, but you kept going. Why? Because you got a family to take care of, right? You're not a selfish person, right? If you're not making calls when you know you need to, to provide a better life for your family, to me, that's about as selfish as it gets because you're not doing everything you can do in your power because you're a little uncomfortable and you're scared of something. You don't even know what you're scared of. Guys, listen to what I said. Think of yourself like a politician, not a real estate salesperson. We're not trying to sell anybody anything. We're trying to help them do what they already want to do. We're just trying to help them do it. Okay, so our job is to let people know who we are, what we do, and that we're here to help. That's it, that's it. We're not trying to sell them. So I think, think a lot of times the, the, the fear of it comes from listening to these gurus who have these 1980s scripts of would you consider selling, would you consider buying, handling objections, oh, you don't want to do that? Well, what if I could do this? Would you do it then? It's like they just told you they don't, that they don't want to do it. I don't care what they don't want to do. Let's, I want to know what they do want to do because that's what I want to help them do. You know. And so when you have that attitude and you're very confident about it, you don't really have to worry about fear of the phone because you know that you're just trying to help people. And if somebody comes at you sideways, me, because they don't realize that I'm there to help, they think I'm just another salesperson immediately. And I'm like, whoa, 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 you, know, you got the wrong person here. You know, like I'm calling to see what I can do to help you. Yeah, absolutely. You're gonna run into people who don't understand or who are mean and stuff like that. But look, here's the numbers. I'll give you the real numbers right now. You make a hundred dials, you're gonna talk to 10 people and have five really good conversations. That's the statistics, right? You're going to talk to 10 and have five good conversations. And with today's world, with the automatic dialers, you can make those 100 calls in an hour and a half. So you take an hour and a half and pick up five decent leads every day. You do that for a couple years, you are done. You're done. How many dials are you actually like when you, and you're, I mean, obviously now you're at a different place, but when you were kind of starting out, like what was, did you have a goal like every day I'm going to come in and, and make X amount of calls or, or or was your goal to talk to X amount of people then however many dollars it got there just to kind of paint a picture to me of kind of what your uh, expectation level was going into it? Yeah, for sure, man. So as far as how many calls I want to make or people I want to talk to, I've tried so many different scenarios and tried to trick myself into this goal and that goal and how can I do this and produce more and I could da 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 da. At the end of the day, it was all about not really caring because here's, here's what happens. You set yourself up and say, okay, I'm going to make 200 calls a day. And one day you make 200 calls and you do great. Three hour session, you do great. The next day you come in and you had three people during that call session that wanted to talk to you for 20 minutes a piece. And it screwed your whole numbers up. Now you can't get to 200 because you had three people that talked to you for 20 minutes. However, those people that talked to you for 20 minutes, you made a really strong connection with. These are people that there's probably a good chance you're gonna do business. Maybe they even want to do a deal now. Maybe it's somebody you actually set an appointment with to go do a deal. I kind of got out of, okay, I wanna make this many calls and talk to this many people. And I come right back to what works for me the best is, is I say, hey, I'm gonna do three by three minimum. Three by three is three hours of calls, three days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from nine to 12. 
And the reason why I do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is because if I, if I have to show property Tuesday morning, I can make that call session up on Thursday or Friday. I'll leave myself, I'll leave myself some empty days on the back end of the week so that I can make up if I lose anything on the front end of the week. But that brings me into another point. Some people get frustrated because they're like, I was gonna make all these calls and then I had two listing appointments. Listen, <laughs> a listing appointment's better than calls. So that's okay that you missed a call session for a listing appointment. That's the whole point of making calls is to get to listing appointments and show properties and do all these things that we need to in order to, to make deals happen and help people buy and sell real estate. So you gotta understand the hierarchy of of your actions here, the high producing activities. You know, the very top of the, the totem pole here is showing buyers properties and, and going to listing appointments and uh, going to closings and negotiating deals. I mean, all those activities trump making calls uh, all day long, right? But right under those activities are, are making calls. Problem is, is a lot of agents take inspection uh, addendums and checking on the financing and uh, you know researching and doing all these things that are under calls, they're taking those activities and putting them on top of calls and making those things a priority. They got their priorities all out of whack and they're all just using these activities to try to sidestep calls. I'll tell you two things. One is that you need to make your calls in the morning so that you get them out of the way. Because if you wait till the afternoon, then you'll just, before you know it, the day's gone and you didn't do them and you're gonna feel really bad about yourself. If you make your calls in the morning, at lunch, you're gonna be like, I've already crushed the day. Like, I'm already a super success. You know, and that feeling you get at the end of the call session, especially when you go in the morning, you're, you need to become addicted to that feeling. You need to become addicted to accomplishing that big goal, right? Because that's a big goal, right? Because that is the mark of top producers, people that do this. The prospect in the morning really hit them hard. I mean, I, I can tell you a lot of stories of agents who do this. Secondly, what you're saying about the different activities, you can skip it for high dollar, pro, pro, dollar productive activities. I want to give you guys a challenge, right? Because a lot of you are reactionary, right? Every time you get a ding on your phone, you're going to attend to whatever it is. An email, a text, a, a message, you know, from somebody, um, you know, uh, inspection addendums, uh, you know, pre-qualification letters. Uh, we need to check on the thing or do this. Look, guys, none of that stuff has to be done right this second. Sure, maybe 1% of 1% of things prop maybe do need to be done right then. Don't get me wrong, maybe there is. There's an exception to every rule, right? But for the most part, the most part, you guys are reacting to every little thing and what I want you to do today, right? I wanna give you guys a challenge just today and see how it makes you feel. Next time you get a text or an email or something about a deal or about a listing, even from a client, even from a client, right? I want you to ignore it for two hours. I want you to ignore all your messages for two hours. And during that two hour block, I just want you to, you can relax, you watch TV for a second, uh, ride a bike, read a book, uh, make calls, do something other than reacting to all this stuff and give it like a couple hours and really just kind of, just let your mind just kind of, you know, almost meditate. Just kind of like get out of that, oh, I gotta respond to every little thing, every little second as soon as it comes through. And when you start exercising and really conditioning your mind to this, what's gonna happen is if you start to really do this, you know, every day and start to do this on a long-term basis, you're gonna be in so much control of your business.